chapter 23, commencing to read from verse number 1, Luke's Gospel 23, and commencing to read, please, from verse 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him, the blessed Lord Jesus, unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation, and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. They were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he heard that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he, the Lord Jesus, answered him nothing. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts tonight that reading of his own precious truth. The title tonight that I have placed upon God's message for this gospel service tonight sums up, sums up tonight the great truth that came from the lips of God Himself. The great truth that came from the lips of God Himself. And the great truth that came from the lips of God Himself is found tonight. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3, where God Himself said, My Spirit shall not always strive with man. Very heavily and very weightily, the Lord has laid this message in my heart, the message that I have called tonight, the silent Savior. We read much tonight concerning the sinless Savior. We read very much tonight concerning the, the sympathetic Savior. He was sympathetic, you know, and he was sinless. We read much tonight concerning the suffering Savior because the Savior suffered for us. We read much tonight about the saving Savior, because He is a saving Savior tonight. There's no other Savior that can save. No other Savior, love, can save your never-dying soul. Not only do we read much about the sinless Savior and the sympathetic Savior and the suffering Savior and the saving Savior, and we can say the sufficient Savior, but tonight God's going to speak to us concerning the silent Savior tonight. Do you know, friend, tonight there can come a time when the Lord refuses to speak. The time will come, dear unsaved friend, when the Lord will no longer speak. And the Lord tonight will no longer trouble you. No, dear unsafe friend, tonight there will come a time when God will let you go. You could live 50 years from it, but the Lord may never speak to you again. You know, friends, this evening you could sit in gospel meetings and still be unmoved. 
And the meeting will take no effect on you. The singing will take no effect on you. The preaching will take no effect on you. Why? Because the Savior has stopped speaking. Sometime after the Second World War, two brethren evangelists held a tent mission on the Orator Road outside Cookstown. Two brethren men preached this night. The first man got up to preach, and he preached from the text in James 1, verse 15. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. He preached his heart out that night. And then the second brethren evangelist, he followed and he preached from Matthew 25, verse 44, where the text says, Therefore be ye also ready. For in such a time that you think not that the Son of Man cometh. There was a man sat in that tent that night who was deeply troubled, deeply convicted, deeply moved by the Spirit of God. And the closing hymn was that night, almost persuaded now to believe Almost persuaded Christ to receive seems some soul, some soul to say, Go, Spirit, go thy way, some more convenient time on thee I'll call. That night, in those days, the more or less everybody cycled to meetings and he got on his bike, headed for home, greatly troubled. And along the way home, he stopped the bike. He got off the bike and got in behind the hedge where there's an oak tree growing. And oak tree was there. And he says, Lord, if this is you troubling me, if this is you, Lord, speaking to me, not tonight, Lord, sometime again. When he got onto his bike and cycled home, God took him at his word. That man lived for 45 years after that night. The Lord never spoke to him again. Even on his deathbed, two brethren from the Money Moor Road Gospel Hall called to see him. He looked round and he says, Men, no point coming to talk to me. Do you know what he said? I silenced God's voice at the foot of the oak tree 45 years ago on the orator road. That's one thing you don't want to do tonight. Silence. God's voice to you. And I want you to look closely at my text tonight. Luke's Gospel 23. And it's down there at verse 9. Herod, speaking of, says, and he questioned him in many words. But he, the Savior, answered him, nothing. Here's Herod tonight. He's face to face with the Savior, and the Savior answers him nothing. First of all, I want to bring your attention to the privilege that Herod received. You know tonight there was a time when God spoke to Herod. Do you know how God spoke to Herod? God spoke to Herod through the mouth of one called John the Baptist. That's how God speaks to men through the men of servants for him. And that was the way God spoke to Herod. God spoke to him many times through the mouth of John the Baptist. And Mark 6, verse 20 tells us that Herod, he feared John. 
Why did he fear John? I'll tell you why he feared John. Because he feared John because he knew John was God's voice to him. It says there, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things. Ah, but listen, and he heard him gladly. I'll tell you, Herod, Herod was without excuse, friends. John the Baptist preached. Herod heard him gladly. He listened to what John had to say. He listened to what John was preaching. And my dear own safe friend tonight, how long have you heard preachers preach the gospel? How many times have you heard preachers preach the same message? Oh, don't be telling me now Herod, Herod had any excuse. Herod had no excuse. Herod heard all right. And Herod heard him. It wasn't tonight that Herod had no chance. It wasn't tonight that Herod was set to the side. Herod had his chance tonight. Herod heard his voice. Herod knew what it was for a sin to be brought before him. And God used John the Baptist tonight to bring his sin before him because John declared to him his sin. It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. And tell me, unsafe friend tonight, how many times through the lips of preachers, through the lips of pastors, through the lips of evangelists, has God brought your sin before you? You know, friend, preachers have to preach about sin tonight because every one of us have been born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And friend, unless we face up to our sin tonight, we'll never be saved. And John the Baptist preached tonight on Herod's sin. You know, I'll tell you, he feared him because they see when Herodias, Herodias threatened to kill him, John the Baptist put him in prison to keep him safe. There was something there, you know, that made Herod think, listen, there's something in you tonight that's making you think. Tell me this tonight, have you ever trembled at the thought of meeting God in your sin, of dying in your sin, going out into eternity in your sin tonight? How many times have you heard Him? And what you've heard has touched your heart. What you've heard has troubled you. And time and time again you've let it go. Do you remember Felix in Acts chapter 24 and Paul preached to Felix? He preached on righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. And we read that Felix trembled. I'll tell you, it's a healthy meeting when sinners tremble. Dear own safe friend, have you ever trembled? Because do you know what Felix did? Felix says, listen, Paul, not now. Come back in a more convenient season and I'll call for you. But that convenient season never come, you know. Never come. You see, unfriend, unsafe friend tonight, the convenient season for you is now. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The privilege that Herod received, he heard his voice at one time. You've heard it more times than enough. You've heard the message of his mercy. You've heard the message of his grace. You've heard the message of his love. How many times has God privileged you that you've heard him? 
many times already have you heard. But you know, tonight God not only wants to point out to us concerning the privilege that her had received, God wants us to bring to us now the point where her had rejected. There came a time when Herod had a choice to make. You know, friend, tonight, there came a time in Herod's life that was his birthday. And as wee lassie danced on his birthday, you know, and he took notice of her. Says to himself, boy, there's a wee girl can dance. And he called her over says, what would you like me to do for you? Whatever it is, I'll give it to you. Do you know, friend, tonight, that's a dangerous mistake. It's a dangerous mistake to make deals with the world. And it's a dangerous mistake to make deals with sin. And the wee girl went to her mama, and her mommy says, Go you back now to Herod and tell him that you want John the Baptist's head on a silver platter. And do you know what you read there? You read when the wee lassie went back to Herod and told him that he wanted, she wanted the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Do you know how Herod felt he was sorry? But he put himself in a corner. And he had to do what he vowed to do. And that night, the whole proceedings fell through a deafening silence as Herod sent the executioner down to the cell. I don't know how long it took, you know, but the moment the axe came down on John's neck, Herod signed and sealed his place in hell. That was the moment Herod silenced God's voice. Friend, week in and week out, I'm telling you, I bring you to the cross. And I'm telling you tonight again, I'm not going to miss it again. I want to bring you to Calvary's cross tonight. And I want you to see the cross. And I want you to see the Christ of God who went to the cross, crucified. He hung there, was nailed there, was crucified there, who suffered there, who bled there, who died there, to save you, love. Friend, he didn't go to the cross for the fun of it. He went to the cross to me to save your immortal soul from going to hell because that's where you're going if you're not saved, that is. He died there that you might be forgiven. He died to make you good. He died that you might go at last to heaven, saved by His precious blood. And friend, this evening, I bring Christ before you. And thank God tonight if He's speaking to you. And thank God tonight if He's troubling you. Then He hasn't stopped speaking to you tonight. If you're sitting there, troubled. Because tonight you're going to hell. Tonight you're on the road to hell. Tonight you're on the road to, you're on the way to hell. But I want to tell you, there's a Savior who can save you right now. Because I know he died, but he rose again, and tonight he's a loving Savior. And you bypass Christ tonight. Ignore Christ, you're going to hell. And if you end up in hell, you'll never lift your voice and say, George McConnell didn't tell me. Because I want to bring to you tonight Christ as the only Savior of sinners. Don't you, friend, tonight make this night 
where you could silence God's voice to you by walking out that door. You could walk out that door tonight and live for another 50 years and God may never speak to you again. And I'll tell you, when that has happened, your doom is sealed. Your doom is sealed. But look tonight at my text and see the plight that Herod reached. It says there he questioned him with many words. But he answered him, nothing. I can see Herod, you know. I can see him pleading with him. Say something. Tell me who you really are. But the Savior was silent. His time for speaking to Herod was over. There's a hymn, and it goes like this. There is a time I know not when, a place I know not where, that seals the destiny of men for glory or despair. Herod, on that dreadful, dark day, was faced with the silent Savior who no longer spoke to him. D.L. Moody, on the 8th of October, 1874, preached in Botanic Gardens in Belfast. He preached that day, and many people were converted to Christ. They had a makeshift counseling chamber erected there. One man came in in floods of tears. He says, Mr. Moody, I'm troubled. Moody smiled and says, thank God. He says, God has been speaking. Both of them kneeled down. Moody led him to Christ. But immediately after he left, another man came in all smiles. He came in not looking Mr. Moody. He came in looking for something else. But Mr. Moody says, can I help you? Has God been speaking to you? He says, God hasn't spoke to me for years. I was brought up under the gospel, he said. I knew and I believe all that you're speaking and I believe all that you're saying, but God hasn't spoke to me for years. Moody began to cry. The great evangelist began to weep. And this man says, Mr. Moody, don't you cry for me. It's not your fault. It's my fault. I let it go many years ago. And I'm a doomed soul. Don't you let it go tonight, friends. If the Savior is speaking to you tonight, don't you let it go, because one day he'll let you go. My spirit will not always strive with man. And this night could be the very night where the Savior, for the last time, will speak with you. Don't be foolish tonight. How many deaths I've lost count of sudden deaths that has happened in 2016 already to people who I knew. Last Sunday night I talked to you about the funeral of Stephen Moffat. He was a year above me at school. He was buried last week. Last night out the Monaghan Road, if some of you know where the Milford Mission Hall is, a wee lassie of 19 was out jogging. And somebody swerved round and hit her by mistake. It was an accident. And killed her. 
19 years of age. Another man was shopping in Tesco's down in Craig, Dungannon, Dungannon. A fellow by the name of Cairns. He got into the car with his wife, turned the ignition on, and he just fell over dead. This night last week, them people were alive and well. It was just an ordinary, normal Sunday night to them, but little did they realize it was their last. And it frightens me thinking that there's somebody in this meeting tonight, and this could be your last. Don't leave it tonight. If the Savior's speaking, come to him. Don't refuse. This could be the last chance for you. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer together, please. Our Father God, tonight we just look to thee. And Lord, tonight we just pray earnestly. Lord, tonight we just pray that thou would have mercy. Straight speak, Lord, tonight we pray. And Lord, tonight if any soul is troubled, Lord, will you trouble them more? Make it difficult, make it hard for them to leave. And Lord, let none be doomed tonight. But Lord, let them be saved. We pray, Lord, that they'll come this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our